Hi everyone and welcome to a 3D printing video and in this one we're going to look at how we can use 3D printing to help with our PC builds and for this particular example we're going to be taking the innards from this MIDI tower build you can see in front of you here which has got a Q9650 uh, you know old quad core uh, build inside it and we're going to transplant that essentially into a 3U rack mount case which is going to go into the cabinet that we built a couple of videos ago. So here's the case in question and it's a pretty standard 3U rack mount case but it has a few issues that I think we can use 3D printing to overcome and one of those is the drive mounting solution in there which is just a couple of bent metal brackets essentially um, and I think we can come up with something more elegant for that. The other one is that at the front of the case we've got two 80mm fans and as anybody who builds PCs knows the smaller the fan you have generally the more noisy it is and this, as this is going essentially into the music environment and we'll be running a MIDI keyboard then we, we need it to be fairly quiet so I think we'll do something about that and we may even look at liquid cooling as I go through the build. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is to strip all the brackets out of the case and the fan unit and see what we've got in terms of space here and immediately I can see that the fan unit uh, is quite um, space hungry so it's taking up a fair bit of thickness at the front there and I think we can 3D print something a lot more elegant that's going to give us more room in this case. So heading over to Fusion 360 let's get that bracket underway and this is pretty much just a case of taking the old bracket copying all the dimensions essentially for the uh, mounting holes and also using the 120mm fan size uh, mounting holes and the aperture that we'll need to put that all onto a sketch then really it's just a case of extruding that shape and we'll extrude it up and down to give us a, a little uh, rebate on each side that we can mount the thing in and it's about 5mm thick rather than the 12mm that we had on the original. Use a few chamfers and fillets essentially so that we can put the mounting screws flush into this mounting bracket and get the thing as low profile in the case as possible and once we've done that we can get it over to Cura and get it printed out. You can see from the printing here this is probably one of the simplest shapes to actually 3D print but you do have to use tape occasionally as I've done here to keep the things stuck on the bed and prevent the corners from curling up as the shape cools down which um, these thin flat shapes tend to do. So once we've printed that out we can mount the fan onto the new mounting plate and we can take that over to the case and start a partial assembly just to see how things are going to be laid out within the chassis itself. So we'll put the motherboard in and screw that down and see what we've got. And also we'll put the power supply in and start routing cabling so that we can start tidying the cabling up before we even uh, get into putting any new components in there and that will help us uh, in terms of you know where we need cable ties and where we might need to stick cables down onto the bottom of the chassis and you can see me essentially making small looms and uh, cable tying up excess cables for the ribbons there and making sure that we've got you know short direct runs throughout the case. Now it's at this point I realised that I can actually get a liquid cooling setup in here. So we'll head over now to Fusion 360 and start printing and designing a liquid cooling uh, CPU block bracket. And the way we design this bracket is we'll take some critical dimensions first of all the LGA 775 hole pattern for the actual CPU mounting, uh, cooler mounting even, and then we'll rough out if you like the CPU water block that I've already got essentially shroud that in a nice black plastic shape and then start cutting it away um, so that the CPU block can fit underneath it. We'll also make sure that the legs later on in this are 
just a little bit shorter so that they actually compress the block onto the CPU as we tighten it down with bolts. And you can see the holes going in at the top there for the water uh, cooling couplers. And I'm not going to hardline tube this, I'm going to use flexible tubing. And then really it's a case of making a mirrored plate underneath which kind of matches the whole pattern on the top and also some cutaways so that any electrical components on the back of the motherboard that are underneath the CPU socket themselves uh, can be you know exposed if you like to the air. You have to cut away a little bit more as well underneath so that we can actually uh, make sure that none of this mounting gets in the way of either components on the back of the motherboard but also give a little bit of um, uh, room if you like or countersinks in there so that we can put the bolts in and they can fit flush to the bracket as well. Okay so once we've finished designing both of those bits it's over to the printer again and get those printed out. Okay, so having printed that out, it's just a case of using some M4 bolts to uh, put the back plate, if you like, on the bottom of the motherboard and then putting the uh, CPU cooler and bracket on top and tightening everything down so that we're now ready to install that motherboard in the chassis and start assembling our water cooling loop. However, before we do that, we also need to put reservoir pump unit in and luckily I had this one from an old build that I could put into the chassis, but of course we need to make some modifications to the bracket itself so that we can actually get some water cooling fluid into that reservoir. So we just mark out roughly where that sits and then after a couple of goes at drilling some large holes into the sheet metal, as you can see here, we can uh, then use essentially Dremel and uh, files and emery cloth to tidy this up or as best as, as we can. Having done that, it's uh, quite apparent that it looks a little bit messy and I thought I could uh, make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye. So using some Plasticoat uh, black, I think it's satin black spray paint, we just give this a quick coat of spray paint and uh, as it's already got either an anodized or, or um, galvanized surface on it, the spray paint takes to it very easily and we end up with something a lot more aesthetically pleasing even though you won't really see it in the rack. And now we've got most of the components done we can start the assembly of the actual main components in the chassis including the water cooling loop. Always a bit of a moment of truth this, so once we put the uh, water cooling loop together and we've got our radiator you can see now on the back of that fan, we then start filling the loop up and also switching it on and off again so that we can uh, make sure the bearing on the pump doesn't run dry and get the loop completely filled up. Okay, whilst we're filling up that loop and getting it uh, circulating around the various hoses and filling up the reservoir and the radiator, we're also going to look now at mounting the drives in there. So we need some kind of cage. So let's head over to Fusion 360 and start designing that. Now this is a fairly easy 
shape to make it's essentially almost like a plastic version of the bracket that we took out originally out of the case however I'm going to change it slightly so that it can carry two two and a half inch drives at the bottom for SSDs which will have the operating system on and then a three and a half inch uh, full size drive if you like for a large capacity SATA drive now I'm putting a one terabyte drive in here to start with but the plan will be to put a 10 terabyte drive in there and actually use this machine as a backup off of my servers so it should keep all my media collection and all the rest of it um, all nicely secure and away from the actual local Location of where the servers sit. The other thing we needed to do on this as well when I was designing this was to make sure that we had plenty of airflow, if you like, from the left and the right, which will uh, allow air to be drawn in from the back of the case, flow over the motherboard, keeping the chipset cool, and then through this drive bracket, and then out through the radiator, and then out, to, out of the front of the case on the rack because we don't want to blow hot air if you like into the rack itself uh, rather get it out of the rack into the into the room rather than having it build up in the back of the rack so having got all that designed and looking a bit uh, strange but uh, it's going to perform a function rather than maybe look beautiful we can get that over to the 3d printer and get it printed out now the shape was a bit of a pain to print it needed a lot of support so you can see on the right hand side of the screen there for that big overhang uh, but um, generally it's not too bad I've got my overhang uh, sorry my support settings to a stage now where they tend to break off of the main piece without destroying it uh, fairly easy however you can see there that the retraction setting needs a bit of work because there's a lot of stringing between the left and right hand side of the actual bracket itself anyway let's get that off of the printer and we can then put our drives in it and mount it into the case so having printed that we just need to assemble the drives into the cage that we've just printed and get that mounted into the chassis itself and connect the cabling up to it so that we can then start to build the operating system in this machine and that should be um, pretty much it uh, other than hopefully it's been interesting to watch how you can use 3d printing to do something with a chassis that it perhaps wasn't intended by its uh, manufacturer so we've managed to put a water cooling loop in here uh, it's the only machine probably left in my network that has an optical drive as well so we managed to squeeze that underneath that uh, water cooling reservoir and pump unit you can see there and we've managed to make room for uh, both the radiator and drive units and also quieten this substantially from the two 80 mil fans that were originally in the case so as ever thanks for watching i mean if you have any questions about this please uh, ask in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer them and i'll see you in the next video